thank you for coming along and joining us with a new program, a suggested program for the year 2019 and 2020. An excellent roll-up. I do appreciate everyone coming, taking the time, and hopefully we'll have a productive end to this evening. The CJC uh, would like to uh, acknowledge the fact that the member, one of our members is actually deceased as of Saturday. We have one more inside the spot. Flexibility was, is a big one for a lot of people. I think that there are a lot of people who have, haven't entered the judges system because they have a family, they have work, they have commitments at certain times of the year that are unavoidable and everything seemed too difficult to be able to fulfil the requirements. You'll see tonight as we go through the different areas and the different parts of the program that flexibility is a big part of our system and you shouldn't be held back just because you can't attend one or two lectures in the, in the program. And you get a chance to do that again whilst you can continue to progress through the program, which is what we've got now. Whilst at the same time a flexible structure, certainty and structure. So that means even though there's heaps of flexibility, you're going to have an ability to be able to have exactly what you need in front of you know what's required within a time period and hopefully that works with the flexible system that we've got going. Support's a big one. 
We don't want to be the judges, Lord, that you can't approach. Come to us. Any questions that you have, any suggestions that you have. In the first slide tonight, what we said was our suggested system. Nothing is set in stone. And I hope out of tonight there are some suggestions and questions that come at the end where we change what we've got as part of the new system. So nothing's there that can't be changed and we want your opinions and ideas. And then of course education, and that's a big one. Education from the point of view of the lectures themselves, from the point of view of hands-on training, the two-year group program. For those of you who've never judged before, the introduction to judging is an education system we are bringing in, which is a six to eight week program that will hopefully get you to know all about judging dogs and even see, seeing if it's for you. So that's basically the general ideas of the aims of our new committee and what we're wanting to achieve. Um, entrance requirements, not all that much has changed. I've just put dot points there in terms of the general things that you have to meet. So there are obviously membership requirements, age requirements, litter, titles, ring stewarding accreditation, and stewarding requirements, which I'll talk about in the next slide, um, and they have changed. Dogs Queensland participation in a club, and then we've added to that a committee as well. So if you're on a committee of Dogs Queensland, it's taken to be exactly the same as if you're on a club. Any involvement and input into Dogs Queensland is what we want, and we expect that to be a candidate in the judges training program, you have to be a part of Dogs Queensland and actually um, be involved in the running and organisation of it. And the big one, demonstrating active support of all judges' training activities. And you will see, this has changed a bit, we want more input from trainee judges to help other trainee judges in the process. And our newly devised open show system is an example of that, and that's certainly something we'll come to in our later slides. Okay, so stewarding requirements. Um, basically what we've done here is it's now the same for everyone. There's no difference between if you're a first time person or if you're an, a, a, a person one group of all breeds. Uh, the requirements have been lessened, as you will see. So I think it used to be 12, um, now it is 6, and it's 6 for everyone. The reason for this is we have stewards that come here every week and love it and aren't judges and why should they stop stewarding for a training judge who mightn't want to be there at that appointment but needs the appointment because they have to make their quota of 12. So we do want you to be able to steward, you do have to be able to work a ring and we think six times in the year is not all that much. As a first time applicant, before you become a training judge and do the program, we require you to do three supervised appointments and three unsupervised appointments. And there from then on, every year until your all breeds, six appointments in the year. It's ring stewarding. It's no more writing, stewarding, open shows, two dogs up at Mount Isa, it's six appointments. So if you go out there and you steward for a group six times, that is it. Specialties count as well. And you'll have to keep that sheet, and that's a standard requirement for everyone in the system. Uh, the changes will be effective immediately uh, if these rules get passed as of this coming year. Okay, introduction to judging program. Introduction to judging program is something I really would have liked uh, when I went through the system, and it is the initial part before you actually start to officially judge dogs and do your first group lectures. It's a six to eight week program. You'll learn if it hasn't been absolutely finalised yet, um, we will be looking at ring etiquette, going through canine turns. It still surprises me in some respects, speaking to people, and they might be two or three groups into their, their system, and there are still terms that they're not aware of. 
So it's going through general canine terminology and getting you used to canine terminology in the different parts of the job. Um, movement, gait, structure, confirmation, critiquing session, ring etiquette, what to do on a hot day, what to do on a rainy day, what to do if you've got 200 dogs to judge, what to do if you've got 20 dogs to judge. All these sort of scenarios will be presented to you in this six to eight week program. So it will be six to eight weeks of basically working out whether you want to judge, whether you want to become a judge, and whether it suits you and your lifestyle. Hopefully everyone will continue on and really like it after that six to eight weeks, um, and we'll go from there. It will be assessed. We haven't worked out whether there'll be little assessments throughout, but what we do know is in the final date, which is the first Thursday, first Thursday of July will be your final introduction to judging assessment. The paper will be quite changed, so we'll be focusing on things you need to know, types of mouths, um, confirmation of a dog, not strange words on the skeleton of the animal. Um, it'll be stuff that you actually need to know practically uh, to become a, a judge and start in the programs. Everything in this system will be more specific to the breed, and everything in this system will be more on what's important to know about that particular thing that you're being educated on. So we don't want obscurities, and we don't want you thinking, why, that, why is that question being asked? That's hopefully all gone. Um, yeah, and that's that system. Okay, two-year group program. Same for everyone. Whether you're a first-time judge, who has just finished the introduction to judging program is starting your first group, or you're judging six groups going through your all breeds license. We're now having this two year group program per group. It doesn't mean it's two years and then you start the next one. You can be in the middle of two programs technically for that. So potentially, if you pass everything along the way, your all breeds license could be at a nine or ten year period. So that's potentially what it will be. Two year group program, breed lectures. We've changed the breed lecture system. So you can see at the back of the handout there, if everyone clicks to that page. Um, it's now all based on subgroups. So groups are grouped according to particular types of dogs. You have, for instance, in group five herding dogs, the Spitz breeds. You have the UK sheepdog breeds and the Australian breeds. You have the continental European breeds. And the final one, the shepherd breeds. So you will learn about breeds grouped together that have specific types of characteristics and points and you'll be examined at the end of those lot of breeds. The final examination for everyone again, and the only set examination date, will fall on that July 1st Thursday date for everyone each year. So it's really the only fixed date that you should attend every year now in this program. Um, subgroups will obviously focus on particular breed types and, and hallmarks of that particular group <coughs> of dogs. The breed lectures themselves will change. The breed lectures themselves, there won't be any more breeder who's never tried judging, who's been in a breed six months and who gives you a lecture on that breed. So we are now expecting with the breed lectures, qualified judges to give you the breed lecture. We will be utilising, hopefully with the use of technology and the board um, approval potentially, use of technology in that judges training room when we get someone here from overseas or interstate who's exceptionally knowledgeable on that breed, asking them to have their breed lecture recorded and making use of that breed lecture on the night of the breed lectures. So hopefully you'll get breed lectures in this program from the very best. And it will take a little bit of time, maybe three or four years, but hopefully by the end of that three or four year period, <coughs> we'll have a collection of breed lectures that will be given by some of our own, and also that you'll be able to watch on a, on a, on a presentation 
to be able to help you in your judges' training. The breeders will not be inside the room when the lecture is given. I hated, as a candidate, having different breeders arguing whilst you try to get the breed lecture happening. It's not happening anymore. The breeders will be outside and will be able to talk to you about anything to do with their breed or their dog after the breed lecture has been given. Um, if in the circumstance we do not have a qualified person here in Queensland or a video, for the first few years the coordinators will be giving that lecture and it will be very structured according to the breed, to the breed standards. So that's a significant change that's happening as well. I hope for most breeds we can get someone who maybe has a retired dog or doesn't mind critical analysis of their dog to have the dog up the front and be able to actually objectively go through the dog and talk about it during the lecture. Um, there have been a couple of those that I've been involved with and it worked really, really well and it was a pretty productive lecture for those um, who have been a part of that last, last semester. Main focus on breed hallmarks, examinations will be on that. There will be no more exam that says, here's a foot, this one's round and dark, this one's round and sort of dark, what's the breed? It will be a breed specific thing that you should know for that breed and you should know in your written examination. And the examinations will be tailored accordingly for that. These are the requirements where we expect to work. Um, it's a two year period and not doing lectures. So let's say you are on night shift, you have three lectures in that first year you can't attend. It does not mean that you can't sit examinations. It does not mean you can't do your critiques, do your open shows. You can progress in the system throughout the two years but just make sure over the two year period where you've had two lots of lectures, you fill these requirements. Attend all breed lectures. Pass the subgroup examinations. If you pass them first year, you don't have to do them again, obviously, in the second year. Five attended and signed off field days. It's not any more that it's limited to specialty shows. So the judges board will be allocating many, many options for you and providing you with someone that's there as a mentor and someone that you can talk to at that time. So as an example, the Kabocha weekend, the Ipswich Kennel Club weekend. Big weekends here with lots of dogs will have all of these options available for you to turn up, be mentored, get your critiques done. And what we're hoping is not just from the judges board, but all the qualified judges in this room, even if you're not all breeds, will participate in this process and be part of this process where we're able to mentor and educate the candidates. And you need to do five of those within the year. We're flexible. Interstate appointments, if you're there with a mentor interstate, will count. You can approach us and get them signed off, no problem at all. 50 critiques. Seems a lot. It's less than a day's work if you're judging in another country with critiques. So in a two-year program, we're expecting 50 critiques. There'll be an emphasis on critiques and learning how to critique. I know there are judges out there amongst you who are on three or four groups and openly say you're not comfortable with critiquing and you don't know how. Hopefully by the end of that process, you will be. There are countries where you are required to critique every dog and you have to do sometimes upwards of 110 dogs in a day, and you need to be able to know that and how to critique properly. It'll be given to you in that introduction to judging program and throughout your entire group program. Yeah? Do you have any breeds? Could it be 50? That's a good breeds? question. Like the staff in shows got 200, yeah. 252, uh, 50 dogs on that day? We'll get back to you on that. It hasn't been a lot of them. Hopefully someone on the committee is writing that down. That's a really good question. Is it 50 dogs or 50 dogs? 50 actual critiques of a dog. 
that was stupid at all. Yeah, but it's 50 dogs, yeah. Whether it's 50 of the same breed, we haven't actually discussed yet. It wouldn't be. Obviously not. Yeah. Um, but that's a requirement. And you know, you could technically go to a big specialty show here, and you could technically do quite a lot of those in one day if you have it with someone who's mental. The two open show appointments. Okay, so this has dramatically changed. The whole idea of our open shows has gone. There's no more number requirements. You will be allocated an open show by the judges board and you will be allocated that open show if it's your turn to sit hands on that day. That year. Well, that, that year, sorry, yeah, later that year. It's something that we need to discuss with clubs and this is a process that we'll have to go through, but what our committee hopes is that the open shows are taken away from the clubs and they're run as part of the judges program from the judges board. So, if Nadia needs two group three open shows that year, Nadia will be approached and be told, are you okay on these two dates? Nadia says yes, she'll turn up and do the open shows on that, those days. The number system of 200 dogs is gone because we found that as a lot of you would have gone through, same dogs, time and time again, less and less as you go through, as you don't put the person up. So it starts at 30, it goes to 20, and by the time you get to 100 dogs, you're really struggling for those numbers. So what we're hoping now is automatic entry in conjunction with the champ show, We'll have to have show managers on board and clubs on board. And the three assessors who will be assessing you at those open shows will be at the champ show ring encouraging the exhibitors to enter under you. Please, cattle dogs have now been on. Can you go over to the open show and go under your open show judge? This is their first appointment of two at open shows so long as they pass where they want your dogs. And hopefully, if it's a group of 100 dogs at the champ show, we might get you 60 at open show level. There are three assessors. The three assessors will confer now just like hands-on, where we're going to get to that in the next slide. The three assessors will assess you on ring craft, will assess you on dog knowledge, and at the end of your open show appointment, you will get feedback, good and bad, or both. Um, you will get a pass grade, or not a fail, but a needs more work. And the needs more work will be constructive feedback given to you which says, these are the things you need to improve upon. You still need to do another two appointments. You could still be allocated it in that same year and still sit hands on in that same year depending upon the system and the types of things that you need improvement on in that group. So it's a whole education system. Um, Are you still going to have the four months between appointments? Uh, Is that still going to play in time? Probably not. Potentially not. It will okay. depend upon when the shows are. There's not yes. going to be any rule on four months between appointments. Okay. It's just you have sat the two by the end of it. We probably wouldn't give you two. We wouldn't give you no, two, no, two no, weeks apart, yeah. but technically you could have within four weeks. Yes. So, Tim, what happens to the appointment you've already done and the assessment that you've already done? Yeah. None of that really counts anymore under the system. So, the only problem that we've envisaged, maybe some candidates will be a little annoyed about, is the work you've done so far. This is the new system being brought in and to sit a hands-on exam, not this year obviously, but the following year. By that following year, we hope that you've ticked off these boxes. Not the lectures again, and not the theory if you exam. you did the lectures two years ago, does the two years start now? Uh, well, technically, if you do the lectures two years ago and you've passed your exams, you would be able to, if you worked hard, elevate next year at, at uh, the practical examinations. Okay. What are you saying? Assessments, that's now relevant. Yes. So you have to do it again. Two more. Yes, with the three assessors. And there's a reason for that when we get to the open show assessment. Sorry, and what about yeah. the three things you've already done? Like nobody's kept the count. Yep, those count. Yeah, but so nobody's kept the count. Nobody's kept the count. 
if, if you've done them in a field day or a specialty show, you should have kept that. Oh, that's Yeah. Um, if you've done them at the lectures, you'd have to talk to your lecturer. There'll be a little bit of flexibility within this first year, for sure. Hey, Tim. So, as someone who is not a training judge yep. and just coming along it to is the three assessors will go outside first, away from the candidates. The three assessors will judge the dogs, move the dogs, talk about the dogs. So there's some consistency of ideas between assessors. And we don't have the situation where an assessor puts a dog first and an assessor puts a dog last and haven't conferred about it. So you might have a difference of opinion with the assessors but they've talked about that difference of opinion and the ideas on the dogs have been discussed between them. At that point, when the assessors have judged the dogs, the candidates will go outside. Candidates then go over the dogs, place the dogs, go up to the assessors and give them their placings individually. Obviously, the candidates speak to the assessors, not with the other candidates there. And the assessors will interview the candidate together. And what we've done here is this is exactly the same style of assessing that we've done at the open shows. So you've had two past open show appointments with three assessors and exactly the same sort of stuff training you for this hands-on examination. It shouldn't be overbearing or it shouldn't be pressurised because you will have been trained in this and your assessors will have said you're at a past grade prior to. Hopefully we get to a point where hands-on examination is more a celebration than something that's been. Because you've been through a system where you know you've done what's required, you've put in the hard yards and you're there on that day with full knowledge and ability to be able to go ahead that day and think, yep, I'm going to pass very easily. And that's the hands-on examination and you will get feedback. Someone made a really good point to me um, a few months ago which said, I get this pass at hands-on examination, but I don't really know if I had weaknesses. I don't really know if there was still stuff I could learn. You'll be told that. You know, yes, you passed. Just be mindful of the fact you could study up a little bit more on beagles, given these reasons. So it doesn't mean that you failed, but it means along the way you're getting feedback on what you've done. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's the system. Okay, well, we'll be making a quick video. Thanks, everyone, for coming along. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. And thank you for your president, who is also come this evening. Thanks, everyone. Is there a cup of coffee or a tea? And Daryl. Thank you. 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 Thank you.